Well, let's discuss these developments with the Dean of NUS's So Sui Hock School of Public Health, Professor Tio Yik Ying. Welcome back to the show, Prof. So, COVID-19 rules will be eased from next Monday, including group sizes on dining in eateries, or wedding receptions and gyms, but working from home remains the default arrangement. So, a big picture question to start, Prof. What's your assessment of how Singapore is doing right now? So thank you for having me. For a country where the Delta variant has been driving the community cases for the past eight to 10 weeks, Singapore is actually doing exceptionally well. Uh, the daily number of cases in our community now is down to single digits again. Our children have returned to attend classes in school, uh, in person, and we have permitted some degree of dining in with more to be allowed from next Monday onwards. So overall, Singapore is doing well, despite having to cope with the more transmissible Delta variant. And I think it's useful to highlight at this point that we are able to get to this stage in part, definitely because of the cooperation of the people to follow the rules and the regulations around gatherings, dining in. But a large part is actually due to Singapore's ability to vaccinate our people quickly and people have been coming forward to take up the vaccines. So now we have more than 60% of our population having received at least the first dose and our trajectory continues to be one of the quickest in the world. So I do anticipate that the COVID-19 situation in Singapore is highly likely to continue to improve and we are in a good position to consider further relaxation of the restrictions in time to come. Right. Well, you mentioned vaccinations. At least half of the population is expected to be fully vaccinated by end July. When that happens and if our COVID-19 situation remains stable, the task force said group sizes may be increased to eight people. But for higher risk indoor mask off activities, guidelines could be differentiated. For instance, a group of eight may be allowed only if they're all fully vaccinated. Otherwise, the group size will remain at five people. Professor Teo, do you think this uh, differentiation of guidelines will be difficult to enforce and monitor? Well, perhaps it's important to highlight firstly that the differentiation of guidelines is necessary because we want to make sure that we have measures in place to protect the unvaccinated people. And clearly what we have heard uh, discussed today is an indication that those who have been vaccinated are indeed deemed to be more protected compared to the unvaccinated. And therefore, as a group, these vaccinated people are permitted to participate in activities that for the past 18 months, we may have found it to be of higher risk. So we've been saying for a while now that vaccination confers a high level of protection against COVID. And these are exactly the kind of measures that we are now able to undertake when sufficient number of people in Singapore have been vaccinated because they are protected from the harmful effects of a COVID infection. So in terms of whether it will be difficult to enforce or monitor this, I think in Singapore, it is made a lot easier through different methods. For example, our COVID-19 vaccination status is actually reflected in the mobile version of Trace Together. And right now we have to use Trace Together practically every time we go out for our dining activities anyway. It is also available on Health Promotion Board's Health Hub app, if you have the Health Hub app on, on your phone. And of course, finally, if someone actually doesn't have a phone or doesn't have the phone with them, there is always the paper certificate that we would each have received when we are vaccinated. So checking this for proof of vaccination will actually not be too difficult. Okay. Well, um, we have been in this heightened alert period for a few months. Do you see any differences in the way the government is approaching our reopening compared with what happened last year when we moved from phase two to three? So I think in Singapore, we are always very cautious. So our reopening right now still bears the hallmark of caution, prudence, and also we are doing this in phases. I think we have not rushed into relaxing our restrictions and we have been relaxing our measures while observing the situation and the data around vaccination, not just in Singapore, but also around the, in different places such as the United Kingdom, Israel, where these are places where there is a high rate of vaccinations. Just, just that at this time round, the data that we look at is not only the number of infections in the community, 
but also the percentage of people in our community in Singapore that have been vaccinated. So by relying on the data, as well as the important part, which is the science of the vaccines, I think this is the way that Singapore can plan its short term, as well as the long term strategies to allow the people to be protected from COVID throughout and to eventually live with COVID. Well, Professor Teo, it's always good to speak with you. That was Professor Teo Yigging, Dean of the Sosui Hawk School of Public Health at NUS.